I'm Chris Murray. And I'm Danny Parks. We're the, uh, the trainers here at Denham, which I'm sure you know already. Uh, today we're going to do uh, a live stream on uh, metalworking, so everything from uh, grinding, cutting, fastening, and we've also got a, a guest uh, star on us with us today. Mm -hmm. That's right, because as you probably are aware, whenever we do our power tool training and when we're doing our live stream with you guys, we like to talk about the tools, but a tool's no good without a decent accessory. Now we can talk for hours about accessories, however we thought what we'll do is we'll get an accessory, a Bosch professional expert accessory expert, see what I did with that, <laughs> um, and come in to talk to us as well as you guys to talk about all the expert accessories as well as some of the normal accessories. Yeah. Uh, and more importantly, be here so that you can ask both us and this expert some questions. So he'll be introducing, I'll be introducing him later on in the live stream. But for now, yeah. what we want to do is we want to get cracking with the live stream as you undoubtedly want to get started. But remember guys, we're going to be talking about metalworking and metalworking tools and accessories. So please pop your questions in the chat. Let's try and focus the questions on that topic. But again, if you have some questions that are general to Bosch accessories or mm -hmm. power tools, we'll get to those questions towards the end. Yeah. Okay. So let's mm -hmm. get started. First right. machine? Right, so we're going to start with one that um, we've produced before. Um, we have a new updated version of it, um, which is the, uh, the shear, the 18 volt shear. So let me just go and grab the new one of those. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's a new one. If I grab the old version as well, just to show a comparison between the two. So you can see the older version there, um, much thicker grip. Um, we've managed to slim down the grip and we've also gone for a brushless motor in here as well. So uh, yeah, there's an uh, all rounder, much better. Uh, Better machine. Okay, so these are this is the GSC 18V 16E. Uh, as Danny pointed out, the main significant difference is we've changed the body. Yeah. Now it uses the same body as our angle grinders, and since we've upgraded all our angle grinders to the brushless models with a slimmer grip, this has been reflected in the new machine. Now, to the guys out there, um, what do you use a shear for? Well, for cutting sheet material, uh, really. So anything up to, I think it's 1.6 mil in steel with this and slightly more in aluminium. That's right, I think it's 2.2 millimetre 2 in aluminium. Yeah. So it obviously depends on the grade of steel that you're cutting. Uh, on harder grade, you obviously won't get as much depth of cut, but we spec this for around, uh, what was it, 400 newtons per millimetre squared. Yes. At 1.6 millimetre depth of cut on that. That's easy to remember. Easy, easy to remember. <laughs> now, um, it's essentially a powered tin snips. I don't know if you said that already. Yeah, no, no. Basically, it's the same as a, a, a shear or tin snips that you would have used manually in the past. Um, obviously, you can travel a lot faster with something like this. Um, not so great on cutting curves. Um, as with normal tin slips, you want to keep that cut material away from your hands. So we have a, a guard built into the bottom of the machine there to stop that material from contacting your hands. Obviously, you should be wearing gloves anyway. Um, but yeah, no, fantastic machine. Um, in addition, on here, the cutting head, I don't know whether you can see this quite closely here, um, the blade here has four separate sides. So should your cut start to get a little bit blunt there, you can undo the bolt and turn it around so you've got four different cutting edges there. And that goes as far as the, um, the moving head here and the static head at the bottom. So you could basically, you've got, you've got a full set of four cutting heads there. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, so the machine has been upgraded, as I said, to a brushless motor, so it's not only that, but more efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a strokes per minute of 32,000. Basically, that's telling you how fast or quickly you can work through the material, how mm -hmm. much you can make progress. Um, and it's got a cutting radius of uh, 20 millimeters, because obviously uh, that's how tight you'll be able to do the cut. So it's a good little cracking machine. Yeah. However, we've got another machine which is in a similar vein, uh, but it's a nibbler. Yes, um, there's a few drawbacks to using a nibbler, but there's also a few advantages as well. Um, so this is the new nibbler. This comes along with the um, comes with the, the shear as well. So similar machines here, um, similar looking. We've got the similar uh, body between the two of them. Another brushless machine. Um, instead of actually shearing the material, what this does is it works like a hole punch. So it actually punches semicircles out of the material, allowing you to do more scroll work, not so much of the straight lining. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's, it's um, the only drawback really with this is the fact that you're losing material. Um, but it's a negligible amount considering you'd be cutting sheet material anyway. So, I mean, it's got a slightly different name because it's a nibbler as mm. opposed to the shear. So this is a GNA 18V-16E. Uh, 16 also stands for the same metric, which means it's got a maximum cutting uh, depth of 1.6 millimeter in mm. steel. Um, and as Dan says, you've got the ability to technically cut uh, in both directions because you don't have that mono direction that you have with a shear. Yeah, the, uh, the only, that was the only drawback with the, the shear because of the shape of the foot underneath you couldn't turn to a certain direction so you'd cut to the left and then you'd have to turn the material around and cut to the left to get the right hand curve. But with this you can just you can weave through the material no problem at all. 
So. Um, the advantage of using some of, some of these machines as well is the fact you're not having to deal with a hot license. So if you're working on a job site where, where you can't have a grinder or it's uh, forbidden to have a grinder or you need an additional coverage from the HSE, something like this can, can get you out of a problem quite easily without having to have all of the paperwork in order for it. Yeah, so I, th I got the old version of this machine out as well because mm. just like with the GSC, the, the GNA is also being updated and you can see if we show maybe in this direction, you can mm -hmm. see the difference in thickness. We cut to the close-up camera. It might not seem like much, but it's a drastic improvement, in, a drastic reduction in the, the, the barrel grip of that machine, making it far more comfortable to use. Yeah, you'll notice that the head of the machine is very similar between the two. Um, in reality, why fix something that works perfectly before? We've already nailed it with the 18 volt previously, the 18 VLI. Um, this is just a new motor and body setup for the similar cutting head. So uh, yeah, if it works, it works. Yeah, I think we've made some minor improvements. Uh, you can see the comparison here that we've made some more inlets for air cooling. Yep. Um, yeah. Obviously, these are also the air's been pulled in from the back and out the front. That's correct, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. But they're, um, they're, they're obviously got the mesh on the sides here. Punch into the close up again. And obviously, these can be removed and you can get rid of any, any particulates that were stuck in there, any yeah. dust and stuff. Yeah, you know, the last thing you want to be doing is pulling material through, especially not so much with these because it only cuts larger pieces of material, like mm -hmm. those little semicircles. Um, the likelihood of them getting sucked in is non existent. But any, any swarf kind of thing, if, you're, if someone working close to you has got a grinder or creating a lot of, uh, a lot of swarf, there's a potential of getting that dragged in through the machine. Sure. This last thing you want with an electric machine is to get um, swarf onto any of the contacts or the circuit board inside. Sure. So. And in case you didn't notice, same thing again, it's a brushless machine, so better run time, up to four times, or sorry, three times longer mm. run time because it doesn't have the brushes to uh, wear down, doesn't have that resistance. Exactly. So yeah. a much, much needed and necessary upgrade to the old machine. Mm. Okay. Definitely. So we've talked about our shears and our nibblers. What's the next machine we've got on the list? Right. It's one of my personal favourites. We're going to go for the, uh, the bandsaw. Yeah. The, uh, a lot of other manufacturers um, create a bandsaw. We are no different. Uh, this has been in production now. This is quite a new version, but the older version has been in production for quite a long time. Um, so we've got a bit of history uh, when it comes to creating bandsaws of this type. Um, usually used for cutting uh, pipe work, um, copper pipes, plastic pipes, anything like that sort of material close to a wall. Um, a lot, and again, very low sparking on this, so you, it's never going to be a spark-free cut, but it will be a lot more reduced than mm -hmm. it would be with a grinder. Uh, in addition, I think that one of the main things is the fact that it's, well, not, it's not vibration-free, uh, mm. but comparison to some other, other machines that you'd use to do similar applications, it's virtually got zero. Well, so yeah. It's got very little, it's only about five meters per second squared, actually, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it's one of those machines <clears> that when you get the hang of using it, and using it correctly, you'll find it's, it's dead easy, really yeah. easy to operate, really low vibration. Um, when you're offering that up to a piece of material to cut, you've got a nice flat cutting working surface here, so you can actually cut up against the pipe. You rest the pipe there, and then you literally just push the machine through the pipe, and yeah. it's, it's literally that easy, really fast removal of material. So that's, um, that's the GCB 18V-63, yeah? Yes, that's it. Um, Bands are readily available for these. They're a re uh, relatively um, well-known size, nothing unusual there. Uh, the bands are actually made by a company called Starrett. Um, we don't make the bands ourselves, and the reason for that is Starrett is the best at making bands, so why would we need to com compete with them when we can buy in, um, an, an accessory from the people who are best at doing it? So, um, so yeah, it's a fantastic bit of kit there. And a lot of people don't know we actually produce this. Uh, often when we go to shows, there's, uh, we've had quite a lot of fun actually getting out of, out of COVID and getting back to shows and talking mm. to you guys direct. Um, there's a lot of tools that we had up on our stands that people weren't aware that we were, we were manufacturing and this was one of them. Yes, no, it's, um, it's, it's been out there for quite some time. A couple of different iterations of it, but yeah, people don't realize. That's right, and that's one of the main reasons we want to have these, these live streams with you guys, because we want to get, we got a lot of feedback from doing more face-to-face -face training, as well as going out to shows, and we'd have people come up to us, oh, I didn't realize you even did this range of metalworking machines, mm. such as the nibblers and the shears. We, sh we, sh we should be remiss uh, to say that we also have uh, some of these products in 12 volt, but yes. we want to focus on mostly our cordless range, but a 12 volt have a quite a few number. Uh, mm. Not a bandsaw, unfortunately, but we do have, it's, uh, is it a shear? 12 volt shear? Yes, there is a 12 volt shear. No nibbler, I'm afraid, but mm. just a shear for that as well. And that's really, that's just quite a, a, a really narrow uh, holding surface on that. So really, really comfortable to use. 
Um, so yeah, if you if you if you built already bought into the 12 volt range and you've got plenty of batteries and chargers and everything and you've, you've already kitted up for that, then the uh, the 12 volt is is a is a great set of shears for it. Yeah, cool. So let's pause very briefly and see whether or not we've had any early questions. So I know a lot of you guys like to get questions in nice and early. Hi, yeah, yeah, there are some questions. Matthew Tucker, hi guys, it was good to see you at the NEC. I like the metal circular saw. I need one. When is the new saw out? Well, we'll be talking about the metal cutting saw uh, in a minute. We'll be talking about it in the stream. We'll talk, well, we'll, we'll wait till then. Mm. But it's already out, yeah. as per September, I believe. Yeah. We got another question from Callum. Would the brushless shear be good for cutting lead for roofing work? Don't see any reason why not. Nice soft material there. If it'll mm -hmm. cut 1.6 mil of, um, of steel, lead shouldn't be a problem. Probably will. The, may, only, may, the, only, mm -hmm. the only issue would be the, the thickness of the lead. But, exactly, um, yeah. For most flashing, I think you probably find that's under 1.6 mil. So, yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. And then JRC Electric just says nice. And <laughs> nice. <laughs> Always good. he's loving yeah. it. And John says the bandsaw is a great little machine. I have an older version. Yeah, the yeah. Old, we talked about the older machine, didn't we? Yeah, the only difference between that and the older version is the access on the new version is a lot easier with um, with clips on the bottom to be able to get um, <clears throat> hold of the to get easier changing of the belt. Um, and the uh, the side handle, I believe, is in a different position, yeah. but it's actually quite more it's a lot more comfortable now to hold than the original version was. So. Yeah, just like how we just like how we uh, displayed with the, uh, the the nibbler and the shear. It's just an incremental inc uh, upgrade that we had with the old bandsaw. Yeah. So always taking your feedback passing that on to the product managers back in Germany and improving the machine for the next generations. Yeah. yeah, one thing I would say about the bandsaw is if you've got one and you use it regularly, um, take time to take the, uh, the, the covers off of the bottom of it and give it a brush out from time to time because yeah. you get any copper dust build up in there, um, it can wear out the wheels and uh, potentially cause the breakage of belts due to, just due to lack of maintenance. So it's always worthwhile taking it apart, giving it a clean out from time to time. So. That's right, yeah. Okay. Just one more just come through. Bolkar says, what happened to the 36 volt tools? It seems like 18 volt has enough power for pretty much anything these days. Well, he's correct. He's answered the question, I think. Right. Uh, yeah, no, we've, we've put a lot more money into, uh, into the development of 18. So mm -hmm. we're obviously with the higher output batteries that we're using now and the bi-turbo products, um, we're actually gaining on a lot of the machines a lot better power on a lot higher impact rate, especially with the hammers. I was going to say the hammers is a good example. Mm. Uh, when we had the GBH A uh, 36, and you say 18 again, isn't it? Mm. The 36 volts, both the compact and the standard. Mm. Um, the standard 18 volt machines ended up being better performers. The GBH 18 V-26 mm. that technically performed better than the 36 volt. And as mm. Danny said, it's just because a lot more investments gone into 18 volt. It's it, but originally when we had the 10.8 at the time the 18 volt and the 36 volt, the 18 volt was a bit of a Goldilocks. It wasn't quite powerful enough, but it was good mm. enough. Now, with all this R&D and all this inno innovation and technology going to 18 volt, it's far better. Yeah, and then I mean, the, um, <clears throat> the GBH 1834CF, mm -hmm. that's kicking out nearly twice the amount of joules exactly. than, the, than the, uh, the 36 volt compact did. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, well, because, I mean, not only is standard 18 volt a really good mm. competitor, if not better than the traditional 36 volt, but our 18 volt by turbo brushless machine far exceeds it in performance yeah, yeah. and power yeah. and runtime. The whole works. Mm. It's never been That's better it. for you to have an 18 volt platform. Yeah, and then you're not lugging around a, a quite a heavy battery mm. as well. So it's a more compact, more energy efficient way of, uh, yeah, way of getting, the, getting the job done. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Okay, so. Just one more, sorry. Mm -hmm. Tom says, bit off topic, but when will we see a 12 volt or 18 volt Bluetooth speaker? Ooh. Well, we've got the Bluetooth radios, um, but only 18 volt. Only 18 volt. Yep. We haven't got. I, have, I haven't seen anything to do with a, um, a Bluetooth speaker. Well, well, uh, yes. Well, we had the old. Um, oh, they called GMLs, didn't we? 12 volt radios. Yeah. But not a speaker. Um, I think we discontinued the old 12 volt radios. I'm, I'm not sure about that. But just the mm. speaker. Interesting. It's the right yeah. size for, it, isn't it? Yeah. It looked like it looks similar to the Gar, maybe. We should. The little yes. GAA12, maybe with a little speaker on it, that wouldn't be a bad shout. Yeah. All right, we'll, no. we'll, we'll chuck that up the line. That's not a bad shout. Yeah. Mm. Okay, back okay. to it. Back to it then, are we? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, next product, uh, they're grinders. Not grinders that I personally use that much of, but sh straight grinders. Yeah, as, uh, largely for metal working, for profiling materials, for grinding away <coughs> uh, materials. Sometimes also used for wood carving as well. There's wood carving bits available. But um, this is the new version of the, uh, the short head um, G G GGS, isn't GGS, it? GGS. Yes. So this is uh, G the GGS um, 18V-20. Um, 
Again, it's got the slim grip that the uh, the older machine doesn't have. Um, that had the similar grip to the the other the other older ones. So it's all it's basically a, a renaissance when it comes to the the handle design and the motor technology that are going into these machines now. Um, yes, uh, six mil to eight mil collet size allows you to use um, for the in for instance. I've got a I've got a little pack set there of um, of some grinding stones that you would use in a machine like this. You can also get wood carving heads. Um, but yeah, that's um, really handy for profiling, especially for foundry work when you're, uh, when you say if you're cleaning out moulds or anything like that, they're mm. always a quite useful thing. Um, stats about the machine, it's about 24,000 RPM, I believe. Yep. Um, what else do we have in information? It weigh, weighs in at just over 1.2 kilos, so really quite, mm. quite light. Yeah, and, um, and relatively light vibration as well. I think it's only about three meters per second. It's again, you, you, you're dealing with a rotary grinding surface, which is uh, linear, so you haven't got much in the way of vibration at all. Obviously, if, you, if you're using harsh grinding stones, you will get a vibration through the machine. Now, I, I, I do apologize if I didn't hear if you said this, Dan, but obviously, because we have upgraded the, the grip size, yep. just like the shears, just like our angle grinders, we've also upgraded now that they're brushless machines as well. Yes. Yeah. So not only are you getting a thinner grip, but you're getting a far more efficient machine as well out of your batteries. So that's a nice go. little machine. Yeah, nicely balanced in the in the hand. Um, again, this coupled with an eight amp or five point five amp hour double stack, you're going to get a lot of runtime out of that. Mm -hmm. um, these are the sort of machines that you tend to pick up and use till the job's done. You don't really want to be stopping and starting. So, um, yeah, double stack or pro core battery of any kind will be perfect. Perfect. For something yes. Like this. So uh, still within uh, straight grinders, but slightly different now because we've got the long nose. Yeah. Here's an example of one. Here's the GGS eighteen. Uh, v-10 SLC SLC there Catchy. we go thanks Dan thank you yeah. Catchy. So, again this is a uh, this is a connected machine so there's not really much you can do on the connected functions on this um, you can um, I believe you can change the dimness or brightness of the uh, HMI the human machine interface on the top here yeah uh, you can also give the machine a name so if you're if you're working amongst a group of people you've all got similar products um, it allows you to to isolate your machine from the bunch and be able to talk to yours instead of accidentally connecting to the, uh, mm -hmm. the person working next to you. Yeah, so uh, in the name, so it's S, it's a, a SLC. So the first thing, as you said, it's got a speed control. You've got your settings on the top there. Yep. So you've got three preset speeds. Yes. L means it's a long nose. And yep. then as Dan says, C, because it's got a connectivity, connectivity. module. That's trying to help, to help you decipher what our products mean. Sometimes it gets to us as well. Yeah. Right. But so, uh, the important thing to notice as well, <coughs> this has got an offset drive to it. This mm -hmm. is the only one of the straight grinders that we do. It's got an offset grind um, head. This allows you to um, to get into more awkward places when you haven't you haven't got the uh, the machine getting in the way of itself. Um, the other advantage with these long nose ones is uh, this insulated gripping surface here allows you to control the head a lot closer to the workpiece. Um, and also, obviously, that gearbox is going to get warm, so it's, in it's to insulate you from the heat as well from mm -hmm. that. But um, yeah, really useful machines for grinding, carving. Um, addressing metal, basically just some right. metal finishing. So in the in the name, it's a it's a ten, which means it's usually going to be the RPM. So this is just over ten thousand RPM. Yeah. Uh, ten thousand and ten thousand five hundred uh, RPM. Yeah. Uh, again, it is a. Oh, I forget if this is brushless or not. I think it. I don't. Yes, I believe it is. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, the other machine wants to show is the next one on the line. If you have to move on. Um, yeah, we can move on from this one. Because uh, I mean, again, it's. Uh, Lovely little machine, nice offset head. Um, we do straight head ones as well. Um, the vibration from this is actually not too bad. It's only 1.5 meters per second squared. So um, a lot of that is gonna be offset by the length of the machine because you're further away from the material. And the other thing is it weighs in slightly heavier than the other one, I believe at 1.6 kilo. Mm -hmm. Ma mainly the the, advan the the extra weight there is gonna be in the, le in the length right. of the head. More material there is gonna be slightly heavier. Yeah, so as, yeah, so as Dan was saying, this was the only one that's got an offset gearbox with an offset head. So uh, we can go to one of the sta more standard machines, I say standard, that you can see we're comparing it to one of these. This is the GGS 18V-23LC, and you can see slightly different design. This is more a traditional, sorry, I'll put it back to the close-up. You can see that, or maybe I'll do it this way, you can see how the, the nose is lower than on the standard, and also on the normal straight grind machine there. So the name, I'm going to put this somewhere. It's an LC. Yep. So it's, it's long the, nose and yeah. it's connected as well. Doesn't have the same speed settings, but you can see here it's got the brushless motor sticker, so it's a brushless machine. Uh, it lacks some of the functionality of that previous machine, but does run faster because this is a 23. So this runs at 23 and a half or 23. Uh, 
23,500 RPM, so it's a much faster turning machine. Yeah, for, um, for uh, grinding material away a lot quicker. So with, a, with a, um, a, a harsher grinding stone or a harsher carving, so it's remove, removing mass material. Mm -hmm. And I think it's got slightly re reduced um, halves from the, the hand and vibration from the previous machine. I think the pre previous machine actually was about 8.5 metres per second. Yep. This one's down to uh, 5.6. So and interestingly, um, with the previous machine, because you had the, a, the offset there, you had a metal gearbox, so you've got helical gears working together to drive it through that angle. Um, with this, you actually have a met uh, plastic coupling in there, so that takes a lot of the vibration as well mm -hmm. out of the machine, so you're not getting that vibration um, transmitted all the way through to the, the main body of the machine where you're holding it. Um, so again, there's, there's a little bit of isolation built in there as well, so it's an element of uh, uh, vibration control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, um, very similar to how we have our angle grinders, and we'll, we'll touch on that very briefly in a second. Uh, when it comes to straight grinders, we mm -hmm. also have a range of different models or different controls, and just like with our GWSs and GWXs, we also have a paddle switch GGS. So yes. This is going to be a GGS uh, 18V-23 PLC. PLC, yes, got it right. Yes. You can see here, so your dead man switch or your, your paddle switch there. So you've got the option here that you can have either the, the traditional, we call it the slide on switch that you see on many mm. angle grinders and similar tools, mm. or it'll probably become a, a regulation, probably a mandatory re regulation soon, mm. where you'd have to have a momentary switch becoming a standard. Mm. So, the, and it's basically, they're essentially the same machine, just a different control. Yeah, these, these machines as well, with the uh, revised handler, it's important to mention, have drop control. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, it's another safety feature that, uh, that we have. Inertia activates the, uh, the chip that we have built into the machine. Um, and before the machine's actually been dropped and hits the floor, it will switch off. So you're not going to be chasing your grinder around the floor. Right, yeah. um, it's uh, another, another uh, quite a worthwhile safety feature there. Yeah, I think, yes, technically they both have kickback as well. It's mm. any, any unwanted acceleration in any, any, any direction, yes. dropping it or if it snatches and catches, exactly. it automatically switch off. So that's a nice thing, nice addition to have from our angle grinder technology. Mm. Right, okay, so uh, what else have we got? Um, I think we'll do one more and then we'll stop for some more questions. The next yep. machine is something we haven't had before in the range. Now this is a brand new one, um, just to the range I believe. Um, pop out this side here, we have the, um, the GRG. Um, 18V-16C, um, our new rivet gun. Um, fantastic for uh, using blind rivets, pop rivets to attach sheets of material to other sheets of material, really. There's no really um, sort of complex way of explaining it, really. Right. Yeah, GRG, 18V-16C. Yep. So 16 stands for the Newton meters of pulling force, is that right? Yep. Yes, fantastic. So if I pop the front off of here, we can quickly show you how the machine works. It's okay. really quite interesting. So similar to any other um, riveter, if I pop that down on its side there, can you pick that up? Yeah, on? there goes that. You see that? I just want to see the, the nose. There you go, try and get that in the light so you can see it. You can see just in here, there's three separate jaws. Now these are serrated on the inside edge, and what they do is they grip the centre of a pot rivet. So here we have a pot rivet, you've got a steel centre shaft, and on the end, this little top hat shape here is an aluminium pot rivet. So once um, this piece of the material is this way, the aluminium sleeve is pushed through the steel material. Um, this machine is responsible for pulling it on the central shaft to a pre-weakened point where it snaps. And what that does is that shrinks the, uh, the rivet up on both sides and fastens those two pieces of material together. So really fast, really um, quite a visually pleasing way of attaching mm. material to each other. I think it's, it's uh, got a stroke length of 20, no, 25 millimetres in it, so that's how far it pulls the actual bit. Yeah. The interesting part of it is I also found out once we've, take, once we've taken one of these out of the box when it arrived, it actually comes with a spare set of jaws in there as well, so it's future-proof to a certain amount of wear and tear. Yeah, it's, uh, it's got that nose cone. I was sipping showing the close-up camera the, the UI at the bottom here yep. because you might be wondering what, what functionality do you need in here. Um, we've got a, a couple of little indicators, so you can get that up in the close-up. You see here the reset button. If you just about see, you've got a clean, a maintenance and a, I think that's a cleaning little icon. Yeah. So obviously these tools require a little bit of maintenance um, and you can set the, um, the maintenance period in the app. So actually one of the reasons why it's connected, you can customize when you'd want that warning light to come on to say, okay, you've done X number, probably tens of thousands of cycles. Mm. You might want to 
do some maintenance on the machine and That's or it. and or change the the teeth. Yeah, which well, is it's just a simple reminder to to protect your investment at the end of the day. You spent the money purchasing the machine and we want you to use it for as long as possible as successfully as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so actually we've got a little demo if you want to give it a try yourself, Chris. You're going to test you me. Yes, I'm going to test you. There we go. So we've got a piece of box section and some sheet steel. I've already pre-drilled a hole through it in the centre. So it's a six mil hole there. Just going to pop the, the rivet in there. And All as we, we need say, to do is push it down. Exactly. If I can do it, That's anyone it. can do it. Do it again, the, uh, the um, spike usually drops through into the back there but it's just got caught. That one didn't that time. Yeah so it's got a collection bin at the back there to collect the, the, um, the tails afterwards. So mm -hmm. several mm -hmm. different sh um, size mandrels. Uh, did you cover the mandrels already? No we haven't. It's uh, so. 3 to 6.4 millimeters and we've got a nice nifty storage on the top there. It might be hard to see because it's quite dark. Yep Point. and we've also got an inbuilt spanner on the side at the back here. So uh, it's all there easy to, uh, to change over so you can go from a very small rivet. 3 mil all the way up to the 6.4 mil ones, which I believe um, we don't have any of those because they're quite big. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, it's a brand new product to the market for us. Uh, we haven't had a riveter, especially an 18 volt one. Mm. Uh, that's, that excites me a little bit because that means that we're, we're, we're moving out of just the standard machines that we used to do and moving mm. into a far, a far wider range of products, especially within the 18 volt range. Yeah, maybe maybe if you're not doing so much riveting, so if you, mm -hmm. you're just doing a, a little project or something, that maybe not for you. but. Um, if you put this into the hand of someone who's doing a lot of riveting, um, maybe fitting sidings, that sort of thing, um, even there, um, aerospace as well, mm -hmm. um, trying to get these into a few, um, few uh, local aerodromes for them to test out as well, which would be quite interesting. Um, so it's, it's more of a labour saving device. Yeah. And it, it put it into the hands of someone who's been using a hand riveter for a long period of time, and it's a godsend, it really is. Yeah, I mean, um, again, when we were at the shows, a lot of people didn't realise we'd brought one out. Mm. Uh, one of the things they did remark on, which was nice, which might not seem like much, obviously is the fact that we store all the different, head, all the different heads here. But I don't know if you pointed out that the actual little span is also retained on the back mm. of the machine there. It's, it's all black on black, so it's hard to see, but it's just here, you see. And a lot of, a lot of users remarked, going, oh, that's nice, that's convenient. Mm. Some, of other, some of the other ones out there uh, you don't have this storage on board, you'll have to dig around your toolbox trying to find all these little tiny bits yeah. and yeah. I could quite easily see myself losing these. You don't know, sort of hanging on a piece of string from the landing <laughs> strap, do you? No, exactly. it's, uh, it's handy to have it all there. There's also a hook on the top there as well, should you want to hang it up. We think of everything here. <laughs> yes, right, okay, so um, let's pause again for a few more questions and then we're going to have a look at some small angle grinders. Yes. And more importantly, we're going to get our guest star from ex our expert accessories expert coming on. Mm. So, Lizzie, what have we got? We're all good for questions at the moment, actually. Keep them coming in, guys. That's all cool. good. That's all good. I mean, well, maybe we were talking about stuff that you, people already know. Now, we did cover small angle grinders in the last, I say, the first ever live stream we yeah. did, which was yeah. specifically on X-Lock. Um, but again, we want to have a look at some of these angle grinding accessories in detail. Now, I've got a couple of examples uh, of two different machines that we've got. We'll look at the X-Lock ones first. Uh, this is our standard 1000 watt machine, this is our GWX, remember it's an X slot machine, and this is your 10SC, so S for speed control, which is on the top here, so you've got your speed settings, and because it is a connected device, which has a connectivity module in here, that means you can alter the speed settings um, on the top here. Mm. Like the other grinders we've got, this has kickback control and drop control, so it has loads of safety features, but more importantly, it's got the X slot mechanism there. Mm. And and uh, the other version we've got here is a paddle switch one. Yeah, so all the, all the same bells and whistles as the previous one, except this is the paddle switch yeah. one. As we've spoken about before, um, it's becoming more and more a, a HSE requirement for a lot of sites to actually have paddle switch um, grinders, mm -hmm. uh, for, just for safety reasons. Right. And the eagle-eyed out there among you may have noticed the new guard that we've got. So this is a nice quick guard add-on, as opposed to having a separate guard to mm. do uh, angle grinder using it as a cutter. Yes. So obviously the, you should always be using a guard full stop. Mm. If you're doing cutting, you should obviously not be using just the grinding guard, you should use a cutting guard. And this little mm. add-on means it's nice and quick to change from the different applications, just like that. So this yeah. is rolling out, these, these guards should be rolling out uh, as standard with all the machines. That's Per EU law, I believe. Or EU That's it. I mean, it, it, it's not a it's not a standard. It's important to mention it's not a standard for wearing your standard PPE, your gloves and your goggles, where you're using machine. It's not to replace that at all. This is in an, an addition, so it's an additional thing to help protect you, the user, from uh, from hurting yourself, basically. Right. Well, enough enough from us. 
Let's get yes. our guest on. So yes. I'd like to introduce Paul Stevenson, one of our expert accessory experts, as I've been saying most, yep. most, most of the times today. Paul, how's Afternoon, things? guys. How you doing, mate? Afternoon. Afternoon, Dan. Right. Afternoon, everyone. I'm Paul from the UK Accessory Team. i am come here to talk about expert accessories. Right, so, I mean, where should we start? We've got, the, we've got our small angle grinders. Yeah, let's talk about Prisma. Yes, please. Anyone that's doing any material removal, um, our standard fibre discs are fantastic, but we've now got, do you want to do the... I'll do the eyes. Pleasure, Chris. So, obviously, what you can see here is you have a number of pieces. Do that on the close-up cam. You can see you've got your backing pad. Yep. You've got the Prisma sheet itself, and then you've got the little, little adapter here that allows you to fit it to it. The trick is to make sure that you line it all up, of course. That's why you're doing it, not me. <laughs> okay. And while Chris is putting on, I'll talk through the Prisma itself. So a standard bonded fibre disc, fantastic for removing metal, um, weld seams, etc. But the new Prisma technology, it will remove four times quicker than a standard Prisma disc, a uh, standard disc. Um, and also self-cooling effect and how it's curved. If you can see that on the, again, on the close-up camera how it's curved, when you're actually using this on the surface, it flattens itself out to get an even grinding surface. So, I think, Rob, we've got a little video that shows some of this, haven't we? So, as you can see from that video, nice flashy corporate video, which mm -hmm. is saying that the performance is really, really good. Four However, times quicker. Exactly, but I yeah. honestly, when we do our training, we're doing things with, like, say, the bonded abrasive wheels and discs that you're used to using, mm -hmm. and when you step up to a Prisma, it's like literally you're wiping away the welds. It is so quick and it is so fast. Yeah, I've, um, I've, I've been doing a bit of welding in my spare time anyway, and uh, I always used to use the flap discs for removing weld material afterwards just to get in a smooth surface, but... Um, I've taken some x lock home and I've given it a damn good going over with um, with that and it's uh, honestly night and day between between the two really. Really fast material removal, really controllable, doesn't skid around all over the place like you might find with a with a bonded abrasive, mm. um, one of the stone wheels. Um, yeah, really compliant surface. Um, in addition, you can also get the three different hard, soft and medium uh, bases for them as well, so you, you can really lean into the material to yeah, move Yeah, a lot of, pe a lot of people there. don't know that. The, mm. I think this one's this a, is medium. One that's a medium, yeah? yeah. That you have three different levels, so you can get different backing pads depending on what you're doing. If you want to really lean in, you want to mould round something, mm. you can really shift up uh, your, uh, your finish by changing the base. That also shows quite <coughs> well the, the fact that the X-Lock system is really up to taking some, some real pressure through the, through the, uh, the mm. attachment you've got on there as well. And don't forget, Chris, mm -hmm. backwards compatible to standard angle grinders as well. That's right, you just need yeah. just a slight a different fitter. Yep. Yeah. Now, now, so one of the things that we always get, a bit of feedback that mm. we always get from our users, and it's the, the hard bit to try and explain to people that it isn't sandpaper. No. It may look like it, cut to the close-up again, it just looks like a normal bit of sandpaper on the camera. It's obviously got a cardboard backer, right? Yep. Um, it feels like a very thick bit of sandpaper, but it really, really lasts. Four to times longer to a standard ceramic, really for heavy welds, heavy mm. seams. You can't mm. go wrong with this. I think you'll find grinder. actually that yeah. piece that you're holding in your hand there, Chris, has actually been used. Yes, it has. So yeah. that's been used for, for our training that's purposes right. here. So you can see it's, it, it, takes a, it takes a bit of beating to, to actually wear it down. That's right, yeah. It comes in a number of grits. This one is a used 60. This one in my hand is a brand new 36. You can see. If you, if you feel that, it's sharp. Focus on as well, Chris. If you can see the actual Prisma technology, it takes its name from the triangle mm -hmm. um, grit, so it actually self-sharpens and cools itself as you're using it. That's right. In, yeah. in, the, in the little video, there's a little animation showing yeah. the fact that it's prismatic, but it's one of those things that if you, if you can get a chance to either see one, or if you, more importantly, if you get a chance to have a go, mm. you'll be absolutely blown away. So this is one of our challenges, to get this out into the market, definitely. to convince yeah. people that this, our statements mm. about this, if anything, we're probably underselling yes, how, good this, how good this accessory is. Mm. Right, so um, 
what other accessories are we going to talk Next about Next accessory is, is a diamond metal wheel. So traditionally, when you cut in steel, we always use the one mil cutting disc. Um, been around for years, will continue to be around for years. One mil in diameter, very quick, very efficient, but the trouble with bonded disc is they have a use-by date. Again, if you look on there, if you've got bonded discs that are past their use-by date, I'm going to spin that round. If it's past the date, please, please do not use it. If this shatters, it will cause injury to yourself or other people working around you. Mm -hmm. But fantastic bit of kit. But what we've now done is replace this with a diamond expert metal wheel. The clues in the name, it's coated in diamonds. It will cut all manners of different steel, stainless, iron, copper, even fiberglass. The pure advantage of this is A, it doesn't have a sell by date, so you can use this for me. I do cut in probably twice a year. I get it out of my, my, my shed, mm -hmm. and I know that I've got no issues with checking sell by dates, or if it's been damaged, if you chuck this in your tool bag, you could potentially chip this and you'd have to <coughs> throw it away. Also, um, it doesn't create any smoke. So when cutting with a standard bonded dish, you get that horrible sulfur type right, smell. Right. Um, and it's not very pleasant when you're working indoors. This, this doesn't do that. And the main two advantages, this will last 100 times longer than a standard bonded disc. So yes, it's slightly more expensive to buy up front, but over the period of time, you'll save 10 times over. Yeah, and, and one of the reasons why we can make that claim, I think it's, I think it's 50 times, isn't it? Um, is because when you're using a bond, it mm. changes in diameter. Mm. And if you're doing anything, like if you're working in any, any material of any thickness, mm. eventually you won't be able to use the no. remainder of As soon as you get down to a, <coughs> on a standard bond, as soon as you get down to say, there, you literally at the guards restriction, so yeah. then you have to swap it. And you, you're, you're usually yeah. having to discard way before that anyway, yeah. because you yeah. just haven't got enough depth for cut. Yeah, yeah. definitely. You, and yeah, you, you just have, you maintain the same diameter all the yeah. way through until the, the diamonds essentially are worn out, which is yeah. a long time away. And also, because it's X-Lock, it's backwards compatible. Do you want to pass me the grinder? Yeah. Yes. So I've got an example of still a, a, a 10. So this is a GWS 10. Yeah, so this is running our traditional M14 spindle. Yep. You can see. So this diamond metal well, only comes in X-Lock version, but as we've, as Chris and Dan have previously mentioned in previous live streams, it is backwards compatible. So it clicks on, you've got the, mm -hmm. the locking nut, so you can put it onto your standard grinder, and away you go, you can use that. That's right. So we had people coming up to us and saying, oh, I really like the X-Lock accessories or the machines themselves. I haven't made the jump to it yet. Um, I'm a little worried that uh, I'm going to have all these discs, all these X-Lock mm. discs, for example, that won't work if I need to give it to someone else. As, as, as Paul's pointing out there, there's no problem. You can, you can buy up all the X-Lock discs you want, they'll work on either of the machines. Mm. And again, as Dan and Chris have already previously demonstrated, it's one easy. click, on you go, as easy as that. And release. Yeah. You make a comment about the directional blade already, haven't you? Or have you? I, I've not actually, I've well, spotted. So on most blades, uh, where they've got diamond segments, they are directional, and myself on a standard grinder, I never take notice of the actual, as you can see here, that's the way it should spin, um, especially with anything with diamonds. With the X-Lock grinder, you cannot put it on the wrong way around. It will only go on one way. So you, are, you know with confidence you are using the accessory to 100% of its efficiency. On a standard grinder, you could literally put it on the wrong way around and not get the full efficiency of the actual diamond segments. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. You could quite happily put it on that yeah. way. And, um, <clears throat> And that's the same on, on concrete uh, diamond discs, anything like that. Please, please check your direction of rotation. Make sure it's fastened on the right way. So punch up to the close-up very quickly. And you'll see, there's actually, you'll see the arrow on the gearbox here. But a lot, as you can say, as, you can, as we've said, it's very easy to put it on the wrong way. Especially once all the, the markings have rubbed off on exactly. the actual disc. Yeah. So there's no, there's no worry about that on the x machine. You physically can't. No. Nope. Don't have to worry about that. Yeah. OK, so. I think we've covered everything on the I think we've done. I think we've done yeah. everything on the grinders. So I think, should we do a quick pause, see if we've got any questions? Any questions for Paul now that he's on, on the stream? Yep, got three questions now actually. William says, are you thinking about making a polisher? An 18 volt, well, we do have a mains polisher, I believe. Yes, GPO. Yeah, 14E. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. um, so we have one. Uh, whether or not we are you referring to an 18 volt or a cordless one, which is a good question, but I don't know if I've. S oh. you, you, we think we've discussed in live streams that a um, a grinder is a very high draw um, machine. Will mm -hmm. drag a lot of energy out of a battery. Uh, when you're creating a polisher and all that material that you're trying to basically turn onto a, a flat plate uh, to to polish it up is a massive amount of drag. Um, I would probably argue. 
uh, by turbo machine it would definitely need to be. Mm -hmm. um, but you're talking maybe the runtime is probably not where we'd want it at the moment. Even on a 12 amp power, it's probably yeah. it's one of those it's one of those products where mm. we'd like to. We're not sure whether or not we've got the de we've developed the technology far enough to get a decent cordless mm. polisher for you. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, a mains one is already in the range. Yeah, I mean, if you've if you've picked up one of the mains polishers before, the the one thing that you'll notice is the gearboxes are very heavy because um, they have to they have to basically um, control and survive and an awful lot of turning force from the motor. Um, so again, that would have to be provided by a bi turbo motor, or and a battery that's that's up to it. Mm, so makes um, sense. quite possible. Yeah, I think it's quite possible. We'll ask the question, see if we can get any information back mm. from our business unit centrally and uh, the product teams there, and see whether or not maybe one's in development. Have, I haven't heard anything yet, but that doesn't nope. mean it's not yeah. happening behind the scenes. Yeah, okay. I mean, for, for, um, for stuff like um, car valeters, people who mop cars of, of quite often, having a cordless version would be probably very useful for them. Yeah, okay, next question. Tom says, I've never used an X-Lock. Is there any way to fit an M14 accessory, or do you need an adapter, or do you have to find an X-Lock accessory? I'm thinking of using things like wire wheels or mortar rakes. Ah, interestingly. Uh, down there. Right, so we'll answer the first part of that question, which is, I believe, if you want to use a normal, um, a normal you M14 accessory, you can't on, on the machine. No. But accessories are backwards compatible, but not forwards compatible. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So we do actually do a range of X-Lock wire wheels. So we've got a, uh, a twisted knotted wheel there, and we also do a twisted cup wheel there as well. So there's a there's a um, there's a range there to cover most of your needs anyway. Easy as that. I mean, that's a much quicker, much easier uh, accessory. Uh, fitment compared to the traditional way you'd put one of these on. Yeah, I because imagine. on a traditional yeah. one, you'd have to get your pin spanner, which would have to be quite deep to get into that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I would. Um, I'd also recommend that if you were going to uh, to go for an X-Lock machine for something like this, um, some uh, uh, you would obviously still need to be using the guard. So uh, yeah, there's. Um, you can. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I forgot what I was going to say now. What it was was <laughs> you need to um, with these wire wheels to not to not lose the wire from the wire wheel. It's always good to control the speed, so mm -hmm. you'd be looking at a speed control grinder, something with a, something with the um, HMI or the human yeah. machine interface on the top there. And again, remember because it's a connected tool, you can alter those depending on what, what application you're doing, what accessory you're using. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think the uh, the RPMs are usually printed on the packaging that you get through with these. Yeah. So. That one there yeah. says uh, six and a half. Max. No, this one's no, twelve fifty. Right. So yeah. you could set that in the app, set the machine mm. to run it. Mm. Uh, and another thing, it's a good thing because. Just like how we discussed about the fact that the accessories are monodirectional, so you can only put them on well or next lock. Pretty important when you're using a wire wheel, especially if you've used it once. You don't want to be turning it around and putting it on the wrong way after Exactly. That. It becomes very unpredictable, which I'm sure a lot of people out there have probably done before. <laughs> right, so, um, <laughs> any more questions, please? <laughs> yep. Callum says, any plans to bring out a thicker diamond X-lock blade for raking out mortar? If not, please put it forward to the production team. Not seen anything, but I'll feed it back and we'll we'll get back to you. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. That's, that's we do up to seven inch on a diamond metal wheel, in terms of diameter but thickness. Now it's the standard. But, two. but if you if you're raking out mortar, you would really want a standard diamond blade. Mm. We'll contact you after the stream and we'll send you the details. Yeah, good yeah. show. Exactly. Another one, Dentine. Will the diamond metal disc come in 76 millimeter variant? At the moment, no. In the 76 mil variant is a bonded disc, similar to this one. That comes in a pack of 10, and we also do the carbide multi-wheel, which I think we have one down there yep. somewhere. But not the diamond metal wheel. But again, I'll feed that go. back to the business That's unit. The That's a, the carbide multi-wheel. We do that in the 76 mil variety as well. Any more questions? Yep, just one more. What's the point in producing non X lock discs if X lock is backwards compatible? Well, that's a good question. Very good question. We are trying to slowly move customers over to the X lock, um, and it is working slowly, but give it another, I'd say, another five years, and I think it'll be like the T shirt jigsaw blade, the SDS Plus system. Exactly. Everyone will be on the X lock. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So everyone we've spoken to, they've always, they've always been surprised mm. when we tell them that these are backwards compatible because it's always the assumption that it's not. Mm. So that's, that's part of our job to make sure that we keep communicating the fact that this is backwards compatible. Yeah. Make sure all our dealers are fully aware that they can stock all the X lock blades yeah. and just replace the normal yeah. shank. 
not shank, sorry, the normal uh, the more, bore. Yeah, bore, um, yeah. And then eventually that will make its way into the market and then we could just make Xlot the new standard. Yeah. yeah. Our business unit is trying to get us to move over to Xlot, but we're sort of telling them to, to slow down a little bit and let us do our job mm -hmm. over the next couple of years. So yeah, it's uh, going to be an eased in process, isn't yeah, it? Sorry, and, and, and we're very confident that Xlot is now the new standard. We've yeah. already got some big players that have already taken up the standard. 14 mm -hmm. suppliers. So From the accessory side. From the accessory side. But then side. also from the power tool side, we know that there's some big players in yes. the manufacturing the manufacturing their mm -hmm. own yep. X-Lot machines yep. under license. Yep. So we're pretty confident that X-Lot's going to be successful yep. out there. Yeah. The new standard. Mm -hmm. New standard, yeah. Just a couple more come through. One person says, x -Lock is heaven, just a breeze. Glad the accessories expert is here also. Greetings to him also. Is Thank there you. going to be an expert 12-inch reciprocating saw all-purpose blade? 12-inch? What's that in mil? Recip blade. That's London. Old oh, money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Metric and imperial system, yeah. <laughs> um, we do, we do, don't we? The longest blade we do is a three hundred mil all purpose, I believe. Mm. We'll check, just, just we'll check it. We'll come yeah. back to you. I'm sure the yeah. longest one we do is three hundred millimeters length. Apart from the brick blade, which is about yes, five hundred mil, right. which we have got down there. Somewhere. That's right. Yeah. 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 yeah uh, we'll I, think, I think I think we said it last time, or, or we'll say it this time. We've got so when it came to recip saw blades, which was the previous live stream. We said we only had a very, very small number of the massive range of mm. recips or accessories just on display, and we were talking about in the last mm. live stream. There's so many. That's why the reason why the accessories catalog is so thick, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. How many mm. accessories in the range? A bit pop quiz for you. Come oh, on. I don't know. Uh, Twelve thousand. Close. Ten and a half. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Any more questions? Yep. Just one more. Is there any plans to bring out a wall chaser? Now, fair shout. Mm. Um, we get asked about this a lot. Yeah. Unfortunately, I've not seen anything. Uh, I think we would really appreciate having a, a wall chaser back in the back in the range, yeah. uh, the GNF. Mm, um, yeah. We had a mains one back in the day. Um, I've not seen anything to say we've got an 18 volt one coming. No. But again, it might be in development. Uh, we we only usually see what's coming in the next year or so. Um, but that but sometimes we find that that's been added to the range or added to development or it's been pushed through. So hopefully yeah. there might be something. But I don't think I've seen. It'll it. have to be a bespoke gearbox. Um, for something like that, considering the, the, the length of the arbor that you'd need to be running. So yeah. It's not like it's an accessory that could be added onto a machine that we already do. So. True, yeah. true. Okay. Okay, so that's the questions for now. So let's move on to the next accessory. We've got the... Yep, I've got the combi, please, Dan. So the next metalworking accessory up is the Expert Sheet Metal Hole Saw. Um, we have, obviously, again, fits on the standard Progressive Hole Saw system one pull and you release a hole saw, you push it back, you click it on. Anything from uh, 15 millimetres up to 68 millimetres in diameter, again it will cut up to 5 mil in sheet metal, perfect for installations for HVAC, electrical, air conditioning, you name it. Also has, it's a solid piece construction of um, steel, carbide teeth, which again, I don't know if you know this Chris, all our carbide is manufactured in our factory in Italy I for all heard, of yeah. our accessory mm -hmm. products. Also has the ejection spring, so when you're actually drilling into the sheet steel, it will pop out the actual um, waste material for you as well. I can show, it. I can show just the accessories yeah. here, you can see all the bits that Paul's talking about there. So I've, uh, I've, seen, I've seen this used in a lot of things, uh, like van insulation. Mm -hmm. Setting the racking up and things yeah, like that. Yeah, uh, read with ambulances and fire engines when they're kitting these out and, and popping the wires through for the lights and sirens. The, this is the sort of kit that they need. Um, again, as I said, HVAC installation is perfect for that cool. um, because it gives a nice clean cut. And again, up to 68 mil. And we do them in kits as well. 50 times longer life than our standard uh, bi metal. Now, we uh, didn't have anything. This is, this is new to the, the range. This is right? new to the range, yeah. When we launched the Expert, um, we brought this in with all the, um, with the other Expert hole saws. Um, but yeah, completely new to the range, and we are selling quite a lot of these as well. Been very, very popular. But again, again, it's us not doing our job properly. We're not telling people. We like, we, as as we always say on the streams, yeah. we like to be very uh, not reserved. Reserved, mm -hmm. yes. like very conservative yes. about whether or not we want to make yeah. shout about our products. And sometimes, yeah. mm -hmm. like the reason why we have this live stream is we really, really need to because yeah. they're cracking bits of kit. Mm -hmm. um, I think we might have a, a VT for this. So should we play the video just to show some of the, yes, the applications please. you can do with it?
So as you saw from that video, uh, that was a good illustration of the kind of applications you can do with that definitely. accessory. Yeah, definitely. While I'm touching it, while we're on all saws, just want to briefly go into the the carbide uh, multi construction all saw again. Perfect for cutting into wood, brick, ceramic tiles. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't think mm -hmm. it, but it does. Also, any types of metal. Bit of lubrication is required if you're cutting metal with this one. But again, all fitting onto the actual power change adapter. As you can see from the actual sheet steel one, you just have to change the pilot bit, which is easily pulled in and then pop the pop it in, and then you can literally away you go. Easy. I mean. Mm -hmm. I've seen, out, I've seen, again, how long has this been out for? I, th I see lots of people talking about uh, their competitor, their brand X that's got this system, and like, look, we've been here for years. Twenty mm -hmm. years, exactly. Yeah, uh, makes it's a, a life, well, a really, really time-saving time -saving device. Yeah. And also, as as all previously pointed out, when you're actually cutting um, with the hole saw, it's easy to get the spoil out, so you can pop out the actual um, the waste right, material yeah. rather than having to get your screwdriver in and trying to, to push out, which again is also dangerous. Yeah. Or worse, yeah, even getting your fingers in there to yeah, try and do definitely. it. Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah, and, and again, the point is, obviously we're talking predominantly about metalworking, but as a multi-material hole saw, you've got two different kinds. Uh, we did one recently when we were talking about combis. We had the yep. GSB 18V-150C. Which is, a, which is a beast of a machine. Mm. And we're running up to 152, mm. 154 millimeter multi-construction hole saw. Mm. I mean, we did it in speed too. Mm -hmm. uh, the accessories are so good. Mm -hmm. That machine can run in full speed. Um, speed two going through was, was OSB metal and OSB multi-material. Yeah, it was blink of an eye start sort of stuff. Really. Yeah. 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 Again, solid barrel material, ejection slots, carbide T, 50 times longer life. What? Pretty much the same What, what, what do you want? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right, so uh, let's move machine. Let's move to a different yep. type of product. We're going to look at some of our metal cutoff saws. Yeah. So I think Dan's got one on his side, the GKMs. This, this one, in fact, has been um, demanded for quite some time, actually. Um, there you go. Cool. So That's I'll so. pop that in the middle so you can get a nice close up. So this is our new GKM 18V 50. Um, and I'll grab the old one. Press so old we one had there. this model before. I'll just move this one out of the way for a second. So this was the older machine, it was a GKM 18 VLI. So you can tell by the name, that was quite an old machine. That yep. came out when the 18 volt range was first, so the 18 volt lithium ion range first came out. Mm. Um, but it got discontinued, and we didn't have a replacement for quite a long time, which was a mm. bit unfortunate, to be honest. But it's back, it's back and it's improved. There's a few little tweaks we've made, haven't we, Dan? Yes, um, the main one you'll notice is the, the guard's slightly different here. We actually have a, a uh, catch section at the end here for any swarf that's cut off the material, so you're, you're not leaving a large amount of material behind. Um, when you do the um, when you do a cutting sort of that sort of material, it's got a good cutting depth to it, up to uh, 50 mil, I believe. That's right. Um, in extruded material, um, have you got a, a, a maximum cutting depth for sheet material? I think anything really. I mean, obviously, I'm yeah. very impressed. I mean, some of the stuff that we've been doing in the workshops probably nearly about a centimetre thick. Yeah. Profile tubing material. Yeah. Uh, I could see it doing more. I mean, we haven't got yeah. a specification for how thick a material will do in one go, mm. but we do say it's got a maximum depth of cut of 50 mil. Yeah, uh, well, we, we, we get asked quite a lot for rebar cutters and things like that. Breezes yeah. straight through it, no problem. Yeah. I was actually genuinely surprised at what this is capable of doing. Yeah, relatively spark free, as you probably said already, mm. and quite quite nice low vibration as well. Yeah. And, and that's all with the standard blade that comes exactly, with this machine. Yeah, it comes with, it comes with a fairly basic blade, that, that um, and we've, we've not managed to find anything that it won't handle yet. Mm. So uh, yeah, really so, quite impressive. So Paul, this comes with a 136 mil, 136 mil disc. Yep, yeah. um, we have within our within our Bosch expert range of circular saw blades over 180 blades. This is our expert blade um, for cutting the aluminium and steel, etc. Again, thin kerf. So for maximum runtime, so you'll get actually more cuts per charge out your battery. Again, it's got the protection coating on to stop the actual uh, friction. Um, and also in the anti-vibration slots and noise reduction, which is especially key when cutting through any, any metal because you'll get that really high right. pinging noise. If you tilt it up a little bit, you can yep. also see that it's got that little battery, battery symbol. Yep. as well. So that would be the, this would be the exact blade that we'd yep. recommend for this machine. Yep. You can see that that's spec to stainless steel as well, and anyone working with stainless steel out there knows how difficult that is to cut. Um, so the fact that you can run it on a circular saw and you can make cuts quickly is, is, is a game changer really, so far as a lot of kitchen fitters go. And the good enough thing about the expert circular saws is they're all laser etched, the printing's on there. So if you ever want to get these resharpened or if you, you need to know what the actual spec of the blade is, on the standard ones they're usually printed and they usually wear off and you don't know what it is. With this one, it'll start, well, basically 
last the lifetime of the actual tool until you need a new one. Yeah, the, tooth, the tooth pitches and everything are on there. Yeah. Anyway, anything any sharpener would need to like be any sharpened. Any saw doctors or anything like that. Obviously, we want yeah. you to buy replacements, but if you want to get them resharpened, it's all on the blade. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, uh, I've forgotten who asked the question about the, the new metal cutoff saw. So, the GKM18 V 50, that's the machine you're looking for. It's already launched as of September, I believe. It comes with a really good uh, blade, but if you want to upgrade it, Definitely. Uh, this one will be a great choice for you, especially if you're working in stainless steel. Yes, 100%. Yeah, also comes with a parallel guard as well, which uh, is around here somewhere. <laughs> okay, so um, let's keep going and then we'll stop for some questions. Next machine we're going to talk about, I think Dan, you would like to talk about this one. This is our new jigsaw. Yeah, I think actually I can't reach it. You'll have to go and grab it from <laughs> up there. There's <laughs> someone who's quite tall. There you go. There you go. So this is our, our, um, our new brushless jigsaw. This is our 125, uh, so the GST 18 v dash. 125. This is the B, this is the, b the bow handle version. It will be available also in a barrel grip. But um, yeah, no, it's a replacement for the old uh, GST 18 V LI B, I believe, yep, which fun. is the, the previous one. That was the brush machine. So this is a brushed upgrade. So quite a nice little machine there. Everything's all built in nicely. We've got um, the tools for uh, changing the, the bevel angle on the, on the blades, all built into the uh, to the base there. We've got a selectable pendulum function on the side here. So there's a two stage, three stage actually, mm. pendulum function on the side there. Uh, speed control on the back here, as well as a variable trigger. Now we haven't had that before. Before no. we only had the variable trigger on the bow handle. Yeah. And it was only the speed controller on the barrel grip. So now you've got the best of both. So yeah, and you're not, you're not based, or you're not limiting your functionality to controlling the speed through the trigger. You can actually set a, an upper limit so you're not going to exceed the uh, the blade speed for specific um, sort of operations for some some of the stainless steel blades that we've got and that sort of thing you need to run at a certain speed to get the best out of the car. So uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's also got tool-free uh, blade removal and fitting. So we've got the little lever on the front there, so that allows you to remove the blade without worrying about getting your fingers in there or uh, potentially having any any accidents. So yeah, fantastic little machine. I think we'll probably go into this a little bit. Yeah, I think uh, that at some point. Uh, as we said, that machine isn't mm. launched yet. We're going to bring it to market in the new year. Um, I think the, the GST 155s have now launched already. Yeah. Now this one's a slightly smaller machine. Um, as I said, to replace the the traditional mm. brushed 18 volt jigsaws we've had out there. Yeah. So this sits kind of in between the old and the uh, the new 155. Yeah. So we so look forward to that being launched. Yeah. If you if you're looking to replace your um, your potentially aging GST 18V Li. Uh, this would be the one to go for. The 5.5 the five five is a fantastic machine, but it doesn't have a bevel base on it. Exactly. So that's just for processing large materials, whereas this is designed to replace the, uh, the brush machine that we've had previously. So. Right. Okay, when it comes to accessories, this is actually one of my favorite expert carbide accessories. Mm. So Paul, tell me about these. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> we'll swap over. There you sure. Go. So again, expert jigsaw blades. I don't know if Chris and Dan's mentioned this, but all our blades are made in Switzerland and a factory up in the mountains in St. Nicholas. But yeah, Stainless steel, T11 EHM, and we do the AHM as well. 50 times longer life than our standard bimetal blade. Mm -hmm. And there's actual carbide, I'll rip this open because there's not much point seeing it in the packet. That's the one. There you go, I don't know if you can get close upon the teeth. Yeah, nice. The actual carbide is welded onto the actual strip to give you a really rigid, strong cut. Again, Chris has already done a lot of this in his hobby <laughs> time <laughs> we've done we've done training on it yeah. and um, we did a comparison between the standard bimetal uh, blades yeah mm. um, I think I maybe got about an inch out of four mil stainless steel which yeah. is you know it's a hard application mm. for a jigsaw mm. uh, before the teeth burnt out yeah. completely this however I was doing runs I probably yeah. did about two or three foot before yes. I started to get slow down and I wasn't I was being quite aggressive with it as mm -hmm. we all know I've got a reputation for torture testing everything really love these yeah they, they took a pu they took a punishment yeah. mm. But again, we always recommend lubricant when you're actually cutting with any metal. But again, as Chris mentioned, he didn't use any cooling oil and it just lasted and lasted compared to the standard yeah. bimetal blade. Yeah, it's the difference between being able to actually cut it and stepping, jumping right past mm. that and being able to cut it really clean, mm. really quick, mm. right? And, and just so much, so much mm. longevity out of those blades. I'm really impressed with And up mm. to three mil thickness in, in sheet material. Yeah. But again, I'll, you could probably even push past that if you really turn the speed down like you said earlier, Dan. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, that's our jigsaw blades. However, we might want to touch just very briefly on some other kinds of blades we've got out there. We obviously had the live stream, uh, of course, two weeks ago, not last week. Uh, we'll talk about uh, some of our recip source. 
So whether or not we just have touch on some of the research. Yeah, yeah, sure. Machines. Come. Yeah. I mean, Dan, if, let's grab the let's grab one of our machines, which is the GSA 18 VLI uh, B-32. Sorry. Yep. Because this is my favourite reship saw. Yep. So this is the the reship saw that we showed you uh, last live stream. So two stage pendulum, speed control on the top there. Two-stage switch, um, underslung design to reduce the amount of uh, vibration, and again a toolless blade removal here as well. So, yeah, fantastic bit of kit. Yeah. This one really was a game changer for us as far as vibration as well. A very low vibration machine compared to the standard um, normal layout of a recip saw that we tend to do. So, um, yeah, real game changer with this. A couple of this with an accessory like um, the Paul's going to show you now. Real, really knocks these machines into a whole different class of uh, of cutting machine. So it allows you to allows you to cut a lot more things. We we actually showed you the uh, the rail last yes, time. Right. Yeah, a lot of people didn't believe it could do that. Mm. Uh, we can, yeah, first hand experience. It definitely will do it. Oh, I've seen it with my own eyes. It's impressive. Right. Yeah. Mm. So Paul, uh, talk to us about yeah, some sure. of the expert range. Yeah. Pass that over to yeah. you. I'll get that out of the way for you then. So this is our expert thicked off metal blade. Again, caught up to 12 mil in, in thickness of gauge in pipe, box material, solid uh, steel bar, as you said here with the actual railway. Um, used throughout uh, the fire brigade in, in pulling, uh, obviously with the super jaws you get on a, on a road traffic accident, they take quite a while to set up. Whereas the fire brigade now use these to literally chop off the roof of the car and get the person out quickly is what we need when there's RTCs, etc. But perfect for demolition work, um, yeah for cutting RSJs, you name it, it's it's a really rigid, as you can see from the actual, the blade, it will give you a nice straight thick cut, rather than you don't want a curved cut with this sort of blade. Again, 50 times longer, 100 times longer life mm. than a standard bar metal blade, and it also has a, a nice coating on there to protect the teeth, a titanium nitrite coating, um, which is what the extra is for. And again, we do these in different lengths, I think we've got a, pull that one out of the way, we do a short one, again, Again our, again, our accessory range is, is quite large. So, yeah. Um, yeah. As we said, that was the one we used to cut that rail yeah, in half as well. You can see that even it, after probably about four minutes non stop cutting through. Focus on the teeth. Exactly, they're, they're all there. They're all still there. You'll know yeah. if the teeth are still really tarnished. Yeah, one of the questions we get is what, what length is best to choose. And we always recommend, obviously, it needs to be long enough to go through the material, yep. including uh, factoring in the stroke length. The stroke length, yeah. But you don't want to go too far through the material because you'll end you'll up. You'll get the whip. Exactly. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. Right, so, I mean, it's five o'clock already. The time's flown. That's gone mm. really quick. We almost need to have more time, and that's probably one of the reasons why we want to have Paul or maybe some of your colleagues come yeah, back yeah, and talk sure. to us about some more accessories. Mm. Um, let's see if we've got any last questions before we uh, knock it on the head. Yep, Andel says, shout out to the presenters and the chat moderator, Miss Lizzie. You're all great. <laughs> As you spoke about the rebar cutter, is there one in the works? How about an all-threaded rod cutter? I've not seen anything on a rebar cutter yet. Not a bespoke machine for that, no, no. Like I said, the, the metal cutting saw will do it, but um, mm. no, no, no uh, yeah. news net on a, on a bespoke machine. No, you might no. be one in the Battery Alliance. There might be, yes, that's mm. a good shout. Um, yeah. Again, we should, we should remind everyone out there that as of, I think it was the beginning of uh, October, mm. we officially came out with our pronoun uh, pronouncement that we are part of, we created an amp share alliance with a number of third party or different manufacturers that are all now adopting our 18 volt battery platform. Mm. Um, they're going to have a Procore battery specifically branded. Uh, we'll be using our Procore batteries with them, but because our batteries, including Procore, are all backwards compatible, you can use any of our 18 volt batteries now on a whole number of different competitors. Mm. I'm not competitors. Sure, sure, I've seen a manufacturer there that is a rebar cutter. Yes, they probably are. So we're probably going to have a live stream talking about that in depth. Mm. Me and Danny are going to go down to into Germany, Leinfelden, do a bit of training on that mm. first, and then we're going to come back and probably do quite a quite a fun live stream just talking about uh, the, the Amp Share Alliance because yes. there's a lot of products. I just just trying to learn our products alone is enough. Is, is enough. Yeah. Now we're going to try and make sure that we understand some of the other people out there. So you're right, there probably is. Yeah. I think there is some kind mm. of rebar cutter. Something similar to Cloud or something. Like I've yes. seen it in one of the videos. Yes, they but definitely you, do the big cable car. Yeah, if you type in Amp Share in Google, you'll you'll mm. see all the manufacturers and you'll probably find it within that range. That's right. Mm. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any plans to bring out a 14-inch abrasive chop saw and also a 14-inch wet concrete saw? Right, so uh, <laughs> we've, we've seen rumours. Mm. That's what we can say. We do the blades. Yeah, yes. uh, and, I, and I, I, I have inkling that there might be a machine on the horizon, but it's very early days and we don't want to mm. get your hopes up too much because I know there are certain machines that are on the roadmap, so to speak, which doesn't mean they're necessarily confirmed, mm. but 
I definitely heard some things mm. about a, uh, or maybe I think it was a cordless. Yeah, I mean, we've got corded equivalents. We don't do wet saw. That's no. the only thing we don't do at the moment. Um, but we do have a corded equivalent of a uh, bonded abrasive cut chop saw um, and a bladed chop saw as well. Mm. Um, but nothing cordless wise, I think, not, at the moment. Not well, definitely not at the moment. Not, anyway. nothing, that, nothing official that we can mm. tell you about yet. Mm. Okay. Another one is, me is the metal cutting saw just a smaller version of a circular saw? Can it be used for other materials as well? Well, the main reason you want to have a, a dedicated metal cut saw is the fact that you don't want to have it geared and geared to a certain ratio. You want mm. it to be running a little slower and geared differently. Is that yes? Yeah. Um, you, you could cut wood with it. So it'll be a little slower. You have to change the blade. None of the specs on the sheets mm. for it are for wood at all. It's, yeah. a, it's only, they only specify metal. So, I would say if you're looking for a good quality cut. Um, plus, I think you'd have trouble getting wood blades in that size Possibly. as well. Possibly. We do um, do them, just be wary, obviously your, your wood dust would get... Yeah, there's no there. dust there's extraction no for us, yeah. No. Yeah. no. So we, we would say, you can do it, whether you, we recommend it, probably not. Mm. No. Yeah, it's, it's got the swarf catch, but it doesn't have dust extraction at all. I was going to say that swarf catch might fill up pretty quick. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> I should imagine that full of sawdust. Um, right yeah, we've got dedicated machines for both, yeah. that's probably the best way mm. to look at it. Another one, can you use the metal saw on the track system? Unfortunately not. It no. doesn't have a G in the name. Obviously, no. you normally have a GKS something something G. That means it's FSN guide rail compatible. Uh, not for this one, no. You only get the parallel guide. I don't think there'll be a problem with using a straight edge and running the, bla the, the base up against the straight That's edge. Right. So as a rudimentary guide, but not using the FSN guide rail system. No. Another one from Callum. A quick one on the on the new 155 and 125 brushes jigsaws, are they both guide rail compatible? Uh, so far as you can use the guide rail adapter, yes. Yeah, yeah they, take the, they take the same size guide rail adapters as the uh, as previous jigsaws. So. Yeah, it's optional accessory. Yes, it's an optional accessory. I'm sure it'll be in the back of the user manual um, as we usually put uh, machine accessories in there, so yeah. Mm. And then one last one from Andal. One last question. Is there a bi-turbo metal cutting circular saw, I'm guessing, in the works also. Hmm, let me think about that one. Have I seen anything on that? We do have a number of bi-turbo brushless circular saws coming out. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're, but I don't know if I, whether or not I've seen a metal one. I have seen one that's going to be moving to a left-hand bias. Yeah, there's a left-hand bias one um, But I haven't seen anything else, not for metal cutting, I'm afraid. No. If we do, I as I said, if we do, Remember, always subscribe, like and subscribe because obviously whenever we get any uh, announcements for new tools, you're going to be probably, the, this is going to be the place where we're going to talk about it, discuss definitely, it. Yeah. Yep. If, if not ourselves, we'll definitely be putting out our marketing material videos and such on our YouTube and our Instagram and our Facebook pages, mm -hmm. talk, teasing about these products. And as soon as we get a sample, well, then we're going to start doing videos about it. So yeah. not yet, but wait, mm. see what's coming. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I think that's our final question, which is not bad. Only 10 minutes behind. Not too bad at not all. Not too bad. We yeah. were worried because we got Paul. We had so much we could talk about. We could talk. be here for hours and hours, <laughs> but uh, only 10 minutes over. I think that's pretty good. So um, yeah. thank you, guys. It's uh, 10 past five. Um, until next time, thank you very much for myself. For me as well. And for me. Thank you. Right. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.